Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about the total cryptocurrency market capitalization. First, we're gonna be talking about it with respect to Bitcoin and altcoins, and then we're gonna be looking at it with just respect to altcoins. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. Remember, we do not have paid promotions here. We do not have affiliate links. We do not have AdSense turned on. So if you would show your support, make sure you subscribe if you're not and give that video a thumbs up. So I want to talk about a couple different charts here. And the second one um, is rather interesting. Okay, but the first one I, I, I want to show is the total crypto market capitalization. And while we did this fit uh, to Bitcoin, it actually seems like it's a pretty good fit to the entire asset class as a whole, which sort of makes sense considering Bitcoin is a subset of the entire asset class and generally governs what the market is capable of doing. The general idea is that at any given time, it tells you what is theoretically possible by the asset class to the upside and the downside instantaneously. Not to say where can it go in, in say six months or, or 12 months, you guys know, but I, I generally think that the, the entire asset class is heading to, to $10 trillion this cycle, but I've been adamant that I don't think this cycle ends in 2021. So I still think we have a long way to go. But with that said, you can imagine that at prior stages, you know, if you were over here, you could have said, well, what is the theoretical move to the downside if we were to dump? And it would have said this area, okay? And then we came back up. Here, it would have been this area. Going to the upside, it would have been up here. We didn't make it there. Here, to the downside. When we were over here, it, it, it more or less shows you what is theoretically possible and, and what is getting too far gone to either the upside or the downside. Now, currently, it ranges from 1.488 trillion to 5.65 trillion. Okay, so about 1.5 trillion up to about 5.6 or 5.7 trillion is more or less what this ranges from right now. Now, one of the things we've discussed before is, is market cycle ROI, right? And, and we've looked at that with Bitcoin, well, with respect to Bitcoin a lot. And if you're not familiar what I'm, with what I'm talking about, uh, it, it's just when we overlay Bitcoin market cycles. And the only reason I'm showing you this is just to, to, to prepare you for the next chart that I want to show you on, on altcoin market capitalization. But generally speaking, what you would expect from one cycle to another, as we've seen, it, we've seen the cycles lengthen out and then diminish as well. And so currently this is where we are. All right. So we just spoke about the entire asset class as a whole. And one of the things we can do uh, is, is to actually compare the market cycle ROI of the entire asset class, not just say looking at Bitcoin, not just looking at Ethereum. Now, if you do that, this is what you get, right? This is what you get. It's a pretty interesting chart to say the least, right? I mean, you know, a lot of times, again, we, we just look at Bitcoin. When you look at the entire asset class as a whole and, and say measure it from the market cycle bottom, the, the current track that we were on back in May was actually right where we were in the prior cycle. But note that the prior cycle continued to go on for, for quite some time. Now, if we were to experience that lengthened cycle that we've been talking about, it would, it, you know, I think it would make sense for us to have quite, quite a ways longer to go. But I would say, while that chart is interesting, while this chart is interesting, we, I mean, first of all, we are getting, you know, a, a lot of sideways movement here, unlike last cycle. I and mean, we had some sideways movement, but it didn't last quite as long. But what if you exclude Bitcoin? What if you look at this chart? What does that look like if you compare the, the asset class market cycle ROI, but excluding Bitcoin? Well, what we can do is we can take a measured move from, say, this area here to the top. OK, and we're not going to include, you know, we're not going to include that wick all the way down. We'll just include sort of right there where, where it stops, because that wick, I'm, I'm fairly certain, was not was not very uh, not a very liquid wick. What if you overlay that right here? Now, what's interesting is it actually lines up relatively well. Now, I don't like providing hopium, to be completely honest. Like, I just like looking at the markets from an unbiased perspective. Uh, and, and to be completely honest, I, I don't think there's a chance at all that the altcoin market cap continues to follow what it was able to accomplish during the last cycle. I, as I've said before, diminishing returns is the name of the game. It's the same thing like a lot of things in life. As I've, I've, I've drawn this metaphor before, you know, I have my laptop here. I have an extra, I have like a, a secondary monitor that I use so I can look over to the secondary monitor and, and, and control things, right? I'm controlling the video on the screen. So 
there is a lot of utility in having a secondary monitor. If I were to have three monitors or four monitors or five monitors at some point, you know, you, you get diminishing returns from, from continuing to add more monitors, right? Um, and, and so in life, you have to consider that you, you do get diminishing returns at some point in everything, right? In everything. And what's interesting, if you look at this chart, I think some people might just look at this chart and say, oh, well, we're just gonna keep tracking it, right? We're just gonna, we're gonna track it for the entirety of the cycle. But that would be somewhat absurd considering that would put the entire altcoin market cap at, at 600 something trillion by, by September of 2022. So I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think we have anywhere, a, a snowball's chance at all to, to, to make that happen. But what it shows is that at this phase of the cycle, Last time, we were more or less at this valuation. Now we were actually slightly, ahead, you know, we were ahead of schedule. But if you just go back to say November, a month ago, the altcoin market capitalization, as a function of say the the, the ROI from market cycle bottom, was actually the same that it was the, the prior cycle. Now you guys know my thoughts. I don't think we're going to track that. What I would expect would be some form of diminishing returns at the very least. So just imagine we get some sideways movement in here for a while. And then maybe we can ultimately trend higher and, and do something like that. Now, I don't think the entire altcoin market cap has to go to, you know, $20 trillion this market cycle. In fact, I highly doubt it would go that high. But you have to imagine that there is still some chances that we, we continue to trend higher with time, even if in the short term, there could be more downside, right? There could be more downside. Um, but I, I still think that is somewhat noise in the grand scheme of the market cycle. I would think that a lengthened cycle would give people the impression on more than one occasion that the cycle has to be over and, and therefore people keep thinking that it's over. It's similar to the summer lull that we actually thought was going to happen. You know, when we were back over in, in April and in, in March and April, we, you know, we speculated that there would be a summer lull. We would have to go down for a while. We'd spend three to six months playing in the sandbox in preparation for hopefully a move later on. And, and there were a lot of people back then that said it was the end of the market cycle. You know, they say we were just going to go back to $10,000 and, and that was going to be it. And I mean, you know, I mean, in the short term, at least they turned out to be wrong, right? We put in new all time highs and, and it certainly seems like this cycle has been a cycle where, you know, the bulls are right for a few months and then the bears are right for a few months and then the bulls are right and then the bears are right. But the bulls have mostly been right, right? If you had to pick one side, you know, generally speaking, the bulls have been right. Now I was bullish you know, in, in 2019 and 2020, as you guys know, in early 2021, I got very bearish. Um, crypto, Twitter, crypto Twitter ripped me a new one for being bearish. Um, and then and then we did go down and then we went back up and then I, I we, we've come back down. But at this point, you know, th this drop for me isn't as isn't as as uh, quite significant, you know, because when I was accumulating in 2019 and 2020, I was just waiting for that bubble to occur. And then that bubble did occur. And now at some point, you just have to go back into reaccumulation if you just believe in the asset class and you want to see it grow and you think that it will grow and you want to, you know, you want to have a position in the asset class, then certainly buying in the summer made a lot of sense. You know, Bitcoin went down to 29K, Ethereum went down back down to $1,700. You had altcoins going down pretty far down as well. So, you know, it certainly made sense to accumulate at that time especially with the grand scope of a, of, a, of a market cycle. So I look at this chart and I say, well, you know, if, if we think about if we think about it, I mean, first of all, what we should note is that this chart here started in April of 2014, which was not actually the market cycle bottom for Bitcoin. OK, so that's the first caveat, right? The, the, the market cycle bottom for Bitcoin didn't actually come until January of 2015, which actually, you know, would have been um, so it wasn't this first one, but this, this second, second move to the downside. Um, so you have to imagine that it, you know, if that, if that was the, where the bottom was, then you can already see that, okay, well, we are experiencing some form of diminishing returns from the cycle peak, but it's just that around this time, there were a lot of altcoins introduced into the market. And so while, while the market was relatively bearish, you had all these different coins popping up and having a little bit of value. And at the time, considering the entire altcoin market cap is only at 30 million or so, it's not like it's that hard to provide to provide another uh, another project that might have a few hundred thousand dollars worth of market cap, which would then grow the market capitalization. So we can we can overlay it like that if we want to just measure it from, say, whatever technically the bottom was that ultimately led into a major market cycle top. 
even though there was a long time of accumulation, but we had a long time of accumulation this cycle too. Or we can be a little bit more rigorous and say, well, let's just overlay it with the actual cycle bottom for Bitcoin and then see what it looks like. And again, I mean, if you look at it like this, it, it would lead you to believe that we are experiencing some form of diminishing returns. And, and even if you don't overlay it like that, even if you say overlay it the other way, you would still argue, I could still argue that we're experiencing some form uh, or that we will experience some form of, of diminishing returns as we continue to navigate this market cycle. And we'll, you know, we won't be able to keep pace with that. So when I look at this chart, I, again, what I think generally speaking is that 2021 is, has been mostly just a, an accumulation year. Okay, now I'm not gonna lie to you and say that it's as good of an accumulation year as 2019 or 2020, because it's not, right? It's just simply not as good of a time to accumulate as it was back then. Okay, you, you, you can't look at this chart and say that this is just as good of a, an accumulation time as this was, right? Clearly, people who bought over here have, have you know, a, a better position in the market. They're, they're positioned a bit stronger than the people who are buying over here. But that doesn't mean that the people that buy over here won't ultimately see returns it just means they're probably going to have to wait a lot longer right they have they just have to wait and wait and wait uh, the, the people that bought over here it's not like they experienced these crazy returns right away they had to wait a while and ultimately time was on their side and eventually you know things came to pass and and the market capitalization went higher so eventually i i do think the the altcoin market as a whole will trend higher but I would argue that we need to see a healthier Bitcoin first. With Bitcoin trading at $47,000 and below the bull market support band, um, the altcoin market is relatively bearish. And uh, additionally, some people I think misinterpret the bull market support band as being predictive. It's not predictive in any way. I think that the, the primary use case for it, in my opinion, is just figuring out whether altcoins are bullish or bearish. Because when Bitcoin's above its bull market support band, altcoins are, are generally bullish and they can recover from Bitcoin drops pretty easily. But when when Bitcoin is below the um, uh, when, when Bitcoin is below the, the, the bull market support band, altcoins get shaken out against Bitcoin a lot easier and they're not as quick to recover. OK, so really for the altcoin market cap to to really decisively trend higher, we would need to see Bitcoin show a little bit more strength whether it means bitcoin getting back above it now or coming down a little bit more and getting back above it or coming all the way back down to the bottom of the range and then getting back above it we're still sort of waiting on that i think to happen and and once that happens and bitcoin reestablishes itself above that level then i think we you know the the entire altcoin market cap can also trend up with time but hopefully this video is useful if you do got if you do like the content make sure you subscribe to the channel give the video a thumbs up also, check out the premium list at intothecryptoverse.com. Thank you for tuning in. Subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye.